Hi everyone. I'm glad you're here to join in our conversations with the Philippines' top industry leaders. It's time to pick their brilliant minds and see what makes them tick. Get ready to take down some notes as we talk about business, life, and everything in between. I am Edu Bansado, and this is Clockwork. Everybody dreams of living the good life. Today's guest is focused on keeping that hope alive for many Filipinos. A former athlete and banker, his shift towards the real estate industry seemed to have been written in the stars. Timely would be the best way to describe it. In the middle of difficulty, he found an opportunity and grabbed it. Today's guest is a fellow Lasallian who, as a child, says he wasn't very sure what he wanted to be when he grew up. All he knew was that he was a persistent kind of guy and had the determination to pursue his goals. And that was enough. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jose Mari Banzon, President of the SM Development Corporation. Good day, Mr. Banzon. Good day. Hi, Edu. Thanks for having me here. You know, it thrills me to say that uh, you and I share the same alma mater, Animo LaSalle. <laughs> Animo. Um, Animo. Well, tell me about your LaSalle days. I'm actually a loyalist, loyal LaSalle, LaSalleite. I went to school in LaSalle from grade school all the way up to the university. I went to grade school in LaSalle Taft. They still had grade school back then. Yeah. And uh, my brothers were eight in the family. The eldest is my sister. And then seven boys all the way down. Uh, we all went to LaSalle. So a very green-blooded family. The same in my case. Really? Same grade school, high school, all the way to university. But uh, I would like to uh, let all of our listeners know that uh, I'm way ahead of you. So that should kind of just put your mind uh, uh, at ease. Tell me, when you're in high, high school, you know, you uh, didn't really have a specific career in mind. No, actually, when I graduated, when I was graduating, I was 14 in high school. I was going to graduate and move on to college. I was going to La Salle. Uh, I wasn't sure what career to take. Uh, I was talking to my mom. I was thinking maybe I'd be a lawyer or maybe follow the footsteps of my dad in the military. I even thought of being a La Salle brother. I don't know why, but... And then my mom told me, she said, that, why don't you just take a business course? Because at the end of the day, everybody's a businessman. That made sense to me. So with that, I decided to take uh, LIACOM in La Salle, that's Liberal Arts and Commerce. It's a two degree course. I took economics and management of financial institutions. So uh, that's how I decided actually my direction in career. But you became not just an athlete, but you became uh, an athlete to be reckoned with. You're a La Salle. Uh, Hall of Famer. What was that about running track that excited you so much? Well, you see, I had a lot of energy. I was very sporty, but I was very weak in technique. So I had to choose a sport that was very basic, and there's nothing more basic than running. You can just do it alone. Very simple, very simple sport. So that uh, I like the simplicity of it. Well, you were also fortunate enough to be, have been mentored by uh, a track and field legend, Coach Tatang Mendoza. What did you learn from Tatang that has, you have brought uh, with you to your uh, personal and professional life? Tatang was my coach in uh, La Salle Green Hills High School. He was also coach of the track team and coach of the basketball team. And he actually gave us championships in both. Uh, we were in the NCAA back then, very good. He was very religious. He didn't only develop us physically for, our, for, for our events, but also spiritually. So, because we were in high school, so I mean, you get cocky because like you're an athlete, but then he made it a point to keep on telling us that uh, your talent came from God. So you have to honor him, you have to thank him, you have to be religious. So he insisted that we go to mass every, uh, every day. I had to go, we'd go there in the afternoon right before classes in, in La Salle Hills. And then it's a small chapel, like 60 square meters. And then we all make sure that we're there, and then we, we make sure that he sees us. So that uh, we um, 
that fear of God. Yeah, we we I brought um, uh, up with me in my career. Also, and then he taught us humility. Of course, your talent didn't come from you; it came from from God. So you've received a lot of accolades and a lot of recognition for your athleticism. But what what can you say is your biggest accomplishment as an athlete? Biggest accomplishment as an athlete is uh, the fact that I I'm still one. Uh, I still run. I haven't uh, really stopped running since high school. I still compete in, uh, well, I run marathons. I, I run both half marathons and full marathons. I, I actually did the uh, 42K Tokyo Marathon and uh, 42K New York Marathon the same year, about six years ago. I think the fact that, uh, that I can still run at this late age is quite an achievement and I'm very proud of that. Going to talk late age, yeah. I should be looking at myself because uh, you know, um, you know how many times do you run, let's say, in a week? I'm not training now, so I. But I try to run about two to three times a week. Uh, when you're training, you have to run at least uh, every other day, so about four times a week or four to five times. So now it's about two to three uh, times just to keep fit. Well, somebody told me, and I hope you don't mind confirming. You wake up really early in the morning. When I train for a marathon, I wake up. Uh, Depends on the distance, but it could be anywhere from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. 4 a.m. at the latest. Because it's a long distance, so I have to go to work. So I just have to finish the distance before I leave for the office. Okay, 3 a.m., I'm just going home by that time. <laughs> okay, but then, now, I mean, that kind of discipline, I can see how you were able to transition from an athlete to a banker. And you could have, you could have pursued athletics, but you you opted to join the corporate world. Uh, how did you come to make that decision and what were your primary motivations? When I was in the university, I gave as much importance to my uh, academics as I did to my athletics. As a matter of fact, um, when I graduated, my graduating batch, I was um, uh, MVP. At the same time, I graduated with honors. I knew that uh, there wasn't really much money to be made if I pursued a career in athletics so that uh, I decided to pursue uh, the career related to the course I took, which is management of financial institutions. So I ended up being a banker. Uh, when I graduated, I was um, lucky to get a job in Hong Kong uh, to work for a bank. And uh, I actually worked in Hong Kong for 15 years in the banking industry. I mean, first job, Hong Kong, one of the financial capitals of the world. What did you find that kind of daunting and overwhelming? No, I, actually, I was fortunate because I they got me for a training program, and that uh, so that I even if you're a fresh graduate, uh, you enter into a management training program. Uh, they make it quite comfortable for you. I was quite fortunate actually because I graduated in 1983. That was uh, actually a crisis. That was when uh, Nino Aquino was shot, and banks were not only um, uh, not hiring; they were firing people. So I was quite fortunate to have gotten a job overseas. It is, I was just lucky. Yeah. Well, you're making me feel very unworthy. <laughs> so wait, yeah. now, if you don't mind, I want to see just how quick you really are. Okay, uh, can we do a sprint question and answer portion? I'm going to throw you some questions and uh, just give me one line answers. Uh, that will kind of help our viewers get a better understanding of how your mind works. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay. What are the words or word that you live by? Push yourself to the limits of your abilities so you have no regrets when you're old. Okay. Good start. Here's a hard one. Superman or Captain America? Wow. <laughs> Superman. Because <laughs> he can fly. <laughs> he doesn't need a shield to protect him. He's stronger. Okay. Sports outfit or business attire? Business attire. Why do you run? Keeps me fit and uh, it gives me time to be alone with my thoughts. Okay. If you would get stuck in an elevator, which personality or celebrity would you want to be stuck in with? Present company excluded. Stuck in an elevator. Yep. MacGyver. Whoa! Good answer. 
A good answer. Not I would... people will, will understand that unless they're old. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, I'm going to have to rethink my former answers because I think MacGyver would have been the best answer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> next, lobby your penthouse. Penthouse. Ah, the view. Yeah, Is that view. why? Yeah, you have a wider view of the world. Okay. And in your case, probably also you're going to say of life. <laughs> Dead person you wish you could have dinner with? My idol, Winston Churchill. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm a John F. Kennedy guy myself. Oh, um, really? Here we go. Best decision you ever made in your life? Pick up athletics. It, it formed my character, discipline, hard work. Uh, it gave me a lot of values that, uh, that I, I still uh, use today. I agree. I was quite an athlete too myself. But uh, who is your favorite sports idol? Sebastian Coe. Wow, still running. Yeah, he's uh, the 1980 and 1984 1500 meter uh, Olympic champion. One of your favorite events? The 1500 meters. Okay. Favorite That's dish? My favorite event. Roast chicken. Okay, we're good. I feel better now. Most important part of a home? The dining room. The dining room. That's where, yeah, that everybody looks forward to the meal at the end of the day. That's where you, share, if you're in a family, that's where you share your uh, your stories or what's happening to your day. Okay. Now think about your next answer very carefully. One word to describe SMDC. Game changer. Okay, okay, you're good. You're very good. Here we go. Last thing you said to your wife before this interview, and it can't be about me. Really? I was <laughs> going to say, I was going to say the last thing, seriously, was that uh, I can't uh, ask for any Mansano's autograph because it's a Zoom interview. It's on the way. Don't you worry. Thank you. You're making me feel a lot better. Mr. Bonzo, you're one of the leaders of one of the country's biggest companies. Sabi nila, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. But strategies did SMDC put in place to ensure long-term resiliency and remain, well, quote, unquote, COVID-proof. SMDC has been known as a uh, developer of affordable housing. And um, so that, that's always been our market. Now, with the pandemic, a lot of the our uh, buyers um, have been affected. Uh, the income has been affected. Uh, the income has been impaired. So we need to be um, sensitive uh, to the situation. So what we did was that we developed uh, uh, even more affordable products. Before our product our product range would be um, would range from about three and a half to uh, eight million pesos. Now we created a product that's a, a condominium, it's only three million pesos and a house and lot that's only about one to two million pesos. So we adjust to the market's cash flow. We have also been working with our principals to brainstorming to make sure our products are suitable for the situation. To start with, our developments um, have features, existing features that are suitable for the situation, like uh, during the lockdown. All of our developments have commercial strips on the ground floor so that when the lockdown happened, the residents just had to go down and they can still do their grocery because you can't go out. But then they, because of the commercial strips, they can still do their grocery, they can buy their medicines, they can do their banking. Uh, so that that's COVID proof. The additional feature of our development is that we have large open common areas. Uh, the outside, we have large gardens, we, the lobbies are, are huge so that there's plenty of opportunities for social distancing. But then we have also made adjustments uh, to our uh, products. Like we realizing that work from home is uh, a new trend now that's part of the new normal. We uh, put a working station in our condominium units. We have strong Wi-Fi. We have a, a common uh, a workplace in our common area. Um, our lobbies are always, well, our huge lobbies are always air conditioned, but now we're designing them to have operable uh, windows so that uh, and electric fans, ceiling fans, so that 
the uh, condominium corporation would have the option if they don't uh, want the air conditioning, they can just have, uh, have ventilation, natural ventilation. So we've made these adjustments to make sure that um, our developments are COVID proof. Seeing how you were confronted with all these challenges um, and seeing how you actually did address these challenges, uh, I'm just curious, was there ever a time when you, you know, I know I have, uh, when you felt that you just wanted to, you know, throw in the towel and wait for the crisis to end before going about your business? Actually, of course, there was initial concern initially, uh, but that quickly went away. You see, when the lockdown happened, there was actually some talk of a lockdown before it happened, so we had prepared for it. Um, days before, we got all department heads together and we came up with plan A, B, C, depends on different scenarios. Uh, as it turned out, we had to resort to plan C because the, the worst case was total lockdown. But people knew what to do. Um, everybody, we said, okay, we're going to have a total lockdown, we'll go to plan C. Everybody brought home their, their laptops and their desktops. For those who didn't have uh, Wi-Fi at home, we gave uh, pocket Wi-Fi. We had them connected to the head office. And uh, fortunately, our sellers were already used to selling online, uh, even before uh, the lockdown. So our sales uh, were that was not disrupted. Uh, so we, because we had prepared, uh, it gave us some comfort. That, that, that we didn't really worry too much when the lockdown happened. And actually, our operations continue to do well, even during the lockdown. Did you feel like um, there was a need for you to uh, change your leadership style during the pandemic? If anything, uh, it made me realize the importance of digitalization, yeah, the new economy, uh, because you had to do a lot of things remotely. We actually have a digital strategy, but you know, it's one of those things that uh, you kind of uh, plan out over a long period of time because it costs a lot of money. What we did, what I did was we accelerated it because now you realize that you can't, uh, uh, you can't be left behind. You have to be ready for that. Um, now, in terms of leadership style, I spend a lot more time with our IT team. Um, even my choice of reading materials, I've been reading a lot about Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and Alibaba, Jack Ma, because it just changes your perspective and makes you realize that you have to embrace this as soon as possible, because it's not an option. It's something you have to do if you were to survive. I'm just curious because I, I can see how you've also invested a lot in people, but did also realize that there was also a need to uh, upgrade infrastructure? Exactly. So that's why we we actually accelerated our budget. Um, for example, uh, we we use physical servers. You know the big server storage space. But then, if you're going to um, have a digital strategy and if you want to come up with really powerful applications, you'll have to shift to the cloud. So we're looking at that kind of direction. So we we're, we're we're actually uh, we're coming up with a big budget to be able to. Um, uh, pursue our digital uh, strategy. A common line I I always hear, not just often, always, the importance of location, location, location. How important is it for SMDC to choose the right location for its development? Actually, it's everything because um, uh, where we decide to put our our condominiums will uh, determine whether or not it becomes successful or not. Uh, so we actually have a um, a department, a whole department that goes around the Philippines looking for properties. They have a, an army of brokers, and we get hundreds of offers to sell every week. We sift through that. And then we present it to the family board, to our principal, the C family. We make sure that the location has good access. So location is very vital to our uh, decision in buying properties. Well, if you are going to buy a next property, would you mind calling me first and letting me know where it is? <laughs> I'm, <sure. laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to go to our, uh, what we call our master class um, okay. portion. Jomari, given your expertise, can you share your best advice when it comes to choosing the location of your next home or property you would want to set up a business in or develop? 
whenever we decide uh, on a property, um, of course, location is important, accessibility, uh, availability of utilities, make sure it's not flood prone. We always put ourselves in the shoes of the buyer. Question comes to our minds is, would, would I want to live there? So we look at all of these features and make sure that it's in, it's in the property before we launch it. We launch our projects. My next question is something also that I'm sure uh, you consider. Creating what could be someone's, uh, okay, dream home. Mr. Jobari, have you built your dream home? I have very big dreams. Actually, I can't afford my dreams. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I, I didn't build my home. Uh, I built it from scratch. Uh, it has everything that we need. We have four bedrooms and each with a bathroom and everything that uh, you'd want in a home. I'm, we're pretty happy with it. More importantly, I have my study. So uh, I'm quite okay. You know, um, anytime you get appointed or you get promoted, I mean, that's a time for great celebration. But um, your appointment as president of SMDC could not have come at a more, if you don't mind my saying so, difficult time. You know, it was in February last year, 2020, when the global pandemic was causing concern to businesses and, of course, the general public. And in just a few days, the country went into lockdown. I mean, what was going through your mind? when you took office? It was a, a real challenge and um, uh, there was a lot of uncertainty. And um, with the pandemic, there's no playbook. There's no like guidelines, like nobody's written like the rules on how you're supposed to deal with it. But then I quickly got comfortable when, um, precisely because we had prepared for it, we, had, we, had, we came up with a strategy that actually worked. Uh, our sales continued to come in. Uh, the back room was uh, holding up. Uh, we're very fortunate that we have a very supportive uh, 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 principals, the C family. You know, I'm, I'm sure when uh, you were first offered the job, I mean, you spoke about the mission, vision of the company, and then here comes um, the challenges. Um, I'm sure you had to pivot right away and uh, consider uh, new strategies. Uh, were you afraid that maybe you may not exactly uh, reach or surpass expectations? The thing about SMDC is that we're a very uh, nimble uh, and uh, agile organization. So um, we could actually uh, adjust very quickly, precisely because our principals are uh, very much involved. We have direct contact. We talk to them. We deal with them every day. We're always communicating. So decisions get made uh, very quickly. So um, we, 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 we we actually have a good setup that allows us to weather crisis like this. Remember that the Philippines has gone through a lot of uh, uh, major crises in the past, like the Asian financial crisis in 1998. That was really rough. Um, the subprime crisis in 2010. But um, you just have to tighten your belt and just weather through it, and you come out stronger and wiser after that. During a backgrounder on you, that you were also into asset recovery. And I guess it's safe to assume that that happened during the 1997-1998 Asian crisis. Do you see the same thing happening now that a lot of people will have to let go of a lot of um, what they've accumulated in order to stay above ground? The current crisis, while um, it's affected a lot of uh, 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 people's cash flow, it's not as bad as the Asian financial crisis. The default, I understand the default rate is not as, as, as serious. Um, and fortunately, they already have a vaccine and uh, things are going to start picking up. So I don't think it will be the same extent as during the Asian financial crisis. I think this one, the banks uh, would be able to manage better, uh, especially since they learned from that and they're much, much uh, better capitalized now. Now the mantra of practically every business in all industries is um, adapting to the new normal. What's your take on the future of the real estate industry? The real estate industry will always be a good investment. Real estate never really loses its value. It always goes up because it's tangible, it's uh, finite, it's permanent. So that, um, of course, there'll be blips like this, yeah? Uh, yeah. And ultimately, 
uh, the prices will go up. Uh, like for example, um, where our office is, the, uh, the Mall of Asia complex, the Bay, Bay Area, about 10, just over 10 years ago, the value was 60,000. Now it's about 350, 360,000 if you can find sellers. So yeah. as long as you hold on to it, uh, real estate will always be one of the best investments that uh, you can find. I'm not worried at all. Now, uh, we were talking about the importance of location earlier. You know, I guess it's time to play another game. Since you're the man on top of SMDC, uh, we want to get a better idea of how familiar you are with the view from the top of your more popular residences. You know, our, our team visited the rooftops of several SMDC property, properties rather, and took some images of the surrounding areas and communities. Um, Mr. Josemari Banzon, with your permission, we will flash these images yes. on screen. And if you can name at least five of these areas or residences, you will get a prize from us. Okay. Are you ready? I'll try. Okay, here we go. Here's our first image. Okay, that's the view of the Manila Bay. That must be Breeze Residences. Yeah, it uh, has a view of Manila Bay and the uh, uh, world famous Manila Bay sunset. You seem very confident there. There's no hesitation in your part. That's my uh, view in the office. Oh, okay, okay. My, my office is in the Mall of Asia. Okay. So now understandable. Now let's go to the second one. Let's see how quick you answer this one. Here's our second image. Okay. Uh, there's an SM Mall. That's that mall is um uh, our the SM Mall in North Edsa. You can tell because there's a very big uh, solar uh, panel roof uh, there. So that must be grass residences in Quezon City. Before I go to the next image, you spoke about solar panels. You know, I noticed some of your prop properties in BGC, you've totally, you've started to outfit the buildings with solar panels. Are you looking more to invest in solar energy in the future with the rest of your developments? Uh, our principal, uh, Mr. Uh, Hans C, is uh, very much involved in this renewable energy and um, um, uh, resilience and so on. So that's definitely going to be a direction that SM will be going into. Okay. Sorry if I had to deviate for a second, but now let's go back. Uh, I just wanted to give you a breather. Now let's go to uh, our third image. That's easy. That's you know, so Memorial. <laughs> Even you recognize that. This is a memorial. It's near, uh, near La Salle. We have a project there called uh, green residences, appropriately named green residences. It has a view of the Rizal Memorial and also a good view of uh, Manila Bay. Okay, the first two were given because we saw the Mall of Asia. Okay, this one now we would like to reveal uh, to our televiewers exactly if you're right or not. Let them be the judge. Yeah, you're right again. Why am I still asking you these questions? <laughs> Okay, let's go to our fourth image. There's a Makati skyline. Uh, you can see that from Mandaluyong. Our project in Mandaluyong along Edsa is light residences. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I know where that is, yes. Okay, okay. and we re our reveal says... Okay, four out of four. Great batting average. And, uh, I mean, I have to get to get the price. <laughs> if you get the next one, you can. If you don't get the next one, rather, cancel the price. Okay. <laughs> okay. So everything depends on this one. Our fifth image. Okay, that's the globe uh, in front of the Mall of Asia. Um, it's a little tricky because we have uh, many uh, residential projects in the Mall of Asia. Uh, but this must be shell residences uh, because of the angle. Other than shell residences, we have C, we have shore, we have S. Uh, but this is definitely shell residences because of the angle you, you've taken the shot from. Why did I even think that we'd catch you? Let's see what the, the reveal is. No. Okay, five out of five. Yep, you'll keep your 
position with SMDC for another 30 years. Okay? That was great. Thank you very, very much. But wait, before, before you go, um, can we have some party words for our viewers? The current crisis, yeah, while painful, is a uh, temporary blip in the economy. At the end of the day, if you have a chance to invest in real estate, it's a good time to invest because real estate being, as I mentioned, being tangible and finite and permanent is probably the best investment that, that you'll make. So don't let the current environment uh, uh, stop you. It's actually a good opportunity now to buy. Well, as I promised, since you you passed our little quiz with flying colors, you'll yeah yeah you'll get a prize from us. We actually sent it to your office already. I don't know. Can uh, I hope it's there? And if it is, yeah, would you mind opening it? Yeah, it's here. So it's while here. you're opening it, uh, we'll give you a little backgrounder since uh, we realized that running uh, has been a part of your life and since you share the same passion with your brothers Greg and Ray, we decided to have these printed on wood for you and your brothers. Um, I paid for that myself. <laughs> what do you think? Okay. Let me just figure this out. And if you don't like it, then I'll have to get the opinion of Greg and Rene. Wow. This is very nice. Perfect. Yeah, it's me with my brothers. In uh, Nassau Green Hills, I don't know if you recognize yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. Nassau Green Hills, the background. Exactly. And that's our little oval. Right sorry. beside the former soccer field. It used to be uh, grass when I was there in high school. Now they made tartan. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, the gym. Yeah, the gym uh, is still there. Yeah, it's uh, actually the main feature of the Saudi Union, so you can't miss it. Thank you very much. I really like it. No, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to share with us your wisdom. Mr. Jose Mari Banzon, President of the SM Development Corporation. Well, that's the end of our shift, but the clock is always ticking and every second counts. I am Edu Bansano, and this is Clockwork.